What is happening, everyone? Welcome to this extra exciting magazine team event in collaboration with the National Literacy Trust and Premier League Primary Stars. We are joined today live by me, Jake Wilson, Deputy Editor of BBC Match of the Day magazine and owner of the world's longest Santa hat. Look at that. Keeps going. Goes forever. If you've ever seen a longer Santa hat, you have my applause. And by my side on this screen is the wonderful, the awesome footy book writer, Matt Oldfield. How hello, are you? hello. Lovely to be here. Awesome. We both work with some big, big names in football. So Matt, I'm going to start off by asking a very tough question. Who is the best footballer in the world right now, according to your expert opinion? Oh, well, as a Southampton fan, now hopefully, hopefully you guys have noticed from this uh, rather fetching shirt that I'm uh, I'm wearing and, and I wear all the time, obviously. Um, so as a Southampton fan, I should probably be saying, you know, one of the Armstrongs, Stuart, Adam, Carl Walker-Peters. But no, if I'm being totally honest with you and with myself, um, Jude Bellingham would be number one right now for me. Yep, really hard to argue. He is the three Lions king right now. Absolutely love the guy. But back to why we are all here today. We are going to learn how to be footy writers like me and Matt. Yes, together we are all going to write an article at home, at school, and it is going to be epic. But first, the more you lot watching get involved today, the better this event will be. So make sure to say hi to us in the comments. I see loads of highs out there already. Year three Park Walk School, just seen them. That's one quick shout out. And there's going to be lots more throughout the day. Matt, do you want to give a couple of other shout outs out there? I'd love to. Um, right, first up, a shout out for Class 12 at the Berkeley Academy in Crewe. We've got uh, Healy Foundation Primary School in Rochdale. Hello, Mrs. Clark. Hello, Mrs. Richards, Mrs. Ross and Miss Actar. Uh, we got hello to uh, Year Six from Healy Primary School, and also we got uh, Sullivan Primary School who are watching in London. Hello and uh, happy holidays to you all. And hello to everyone else we haven't shouted out so far. So far, get them in that chat. Maybe we'll get to you a little bit later. But first, before we get to any of the proper reasons we're here, any of that good work, we're going to run a bit of a giveaway. We have a wheel to spin. So if your school appears on screen at the end of this wheel spinning, that beautiful wheel there, then please email sport at literacytrust.org.uk to claim a free, beautiful box of books. How so, exciting. It's so exciting. And it is time, Matt, to spin that wheel. Ooh. We have a winner! It is Taddington and Priest Cliff School. Congratulations to you. Yes, please email sport at literacytrust.org.uk to claim your free books. Congratulations. But it's time to get this show on the road. Hopefully everyone out there has a printed worksheet in front of you. But if not, make sure you've got something to write with and on. These worksheets are from our Premier League magazine team writing intervention, which is free to sign up to and download. So now everyone out there, it's time to look at your teachers and say, please sign us up for magazine team. Just I think I heard some of that all the way from here. So well done. Good shouting, everyone. The link is in the chat. So teachers, get yourselves signed up if you are not already. We're going to launch a quick poll now as well. Does your school already run the magazine team. Let us know in the poll and in the chat. Oh, that's popped up on screen there. First few votes coming in. And I think it's clear to say people need to sign up to that magazine team because it's brilliant, isn't it, Matt? It is. It's fantastic. Yeah, really, really good stuff in there. Good to see some yeses filtering in. <laughs> OK, so today we are going to write a how to article. This is something that me and Matt do quite a lot of in our jobs on magazines and books. And the first thing we need to do to write a how to article is to pick the skill we want to write about in this article. So 
We want to know what skills you out there are amazing at. It could be something football-y or something completely random. Let us know in the chat what you are brilliant at. Matt, start us off here. What's your best skill, your party trick? Well, um, as someone who's been a defender for all my life, I wouldn't say I'm blessed with a load of party tricks exactly. But if I had to pick one, I'd say that my roulette slash Zidane Maradona turn, whichever side you're on, I, I reckon that's pretty decent. Brilliant. Must be pretty good at it. Having written two books on those brilliant names. Good plug there, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How can we translate that skill, knowing that ability, into our writing? So we have uh, some different answers coming in already. Uh, we have um, some suggestions of unicycling. We've got horse riding, uh, we've got a penalty shootout, all kinds of different stuff. And um, those are going to make up the headline or the title of your article. Now we're going to move on to the next section of the worksheet, and that is our introduction. We're going to need to write a quick summary of what your best skill is. Now, Jake, how would you sum up your skill? I know you write how-tos for the BBC Match of the Day magazine. Yeah, we write how-tos all the time in the mag. Every fortnightly mag, you'll learn something good in there. And one of the skills I've researched and written about for the magazine is inside the video game FC24. Give a big shout out in your classroom if you've played FC24 so far. Yep, definitely heard some shouts out there. I learned to do the rainbow flick move in game. And if I was going to teach everyone how to pull off this move, I would introduce my article by explaining that it's a move that looks just as good on screen as it does on the pitch. Now, to make this article as good as it can be, we need to do some research. And you must do research all the time in your job, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I, If I'm lucky, I get to work directly uh, with the footballers themselves and kind of do my research by actually asking them questions, which is way more fun and a lot more e a lot easier. But if not, what I mostly have to do is collect all the information myself. And that means uh, looking at books, websites, videos, podcasts, all kinds of different places. Um, and as I'm collecting up all this information, one of the really, really important things for me is making sure that everything that I've got written down is true, right? Um, and so one of the things that I always do is if I find out a fact, a, an amazing fact, I make sure that I go and check it in at least three different places just to make sure that I can really trust that. Um, this is also part of one of the fixtures on our free intervention Premier League magazine team. There's that magazine team coming up trumps once again. Yes, Matt is totally right. That research is super important. We need to make sure every word rewrite is exactly true. So I've had a little bit of time there to think about our intro. And it needs to be short, but just gives a flavour of what is to come in that how-to article. But before we do that how-to article, we need to write an equipment list. Everything that they need for the skill in hand. And you don't need much for your skill, do you, Matt? No, just a football, really. But it would be nice to have, you know, a decent pair of trainers and a good amount of space to practice in. <laughs> definitely, definitely. We'll put that on the desirable list, Matt. Let us know in the chat what you guys might need for your skills. So we saw a few there. We got a few more come through. Things like painting, art, rugby, fishing. Fishing's pretty hard to do if you don't have some water or a rod. Or then otherwise you're just doing it in your bathtub. And I don't think you're going to catch much in there, are you, Matt? Not really, no. Other than a, maybe a rubber duck or two. I'd, I'd take it. I'd take it. So look forward to seeing some of those shin pads we've got there. Really important. We've all had those kicks to the shins and we don't want it. Keep sending those in. Be great to read those. Next things next is our actual instructions. We've given you space on your worksheet for five tips one two three four five and that is a very good start if you need more steps or fewer steps just go for it have fun now it is time to write those steps to achieve your skill don't forget your imperative verbs be bossy matt what would your steps be lovely stuff so i'm just going to read from this book another little plug for you uh so this is um how we're going to do that zidane 
roulette, whatever you like to call it. Um, so number one, we've got dribble forward gracefully, looking like a king with all the time in the world. So there you've got dribble being the imperative verb we're using. Excellent. Step two, we've got as a defender comes in for the tackle, drag the ball back with your stronger foot. Step three, it's time to turn away into space. Use your body to shield the ball. Step four, as you spin around in a full circle, use your weaker foot to drag the ball with you. Step five, move the ball back onto your stronger foot and dribble away with a burst of pace, leaving the defender looking like an absolute fool. <laughs> Brilliant, Matt. That is amazing stuff. And I'm sure that's a great example for everyone at home or at school producing some amazing work. We hope you've started your steps and got a bit of a bit of a skeleton at least. What's your next step, though, Matt, on writing an article like this? Well, so having written um, the instructions for the first time, what we then need to go back is uh, look at it again and again and again. OK, so we're going to look at it a load of times and make sure that it's as good as it can possibly be. So maybe I'm going to change a word here or a sentence here. And basically what we're trying to do is make it as good as it can possibly be and make sure it's nice and clear for everyone to understand. I bet you do the same too with your writing, Jake. Definitely. You write your article, but then drafting and redrafting is super mega important part of the process. It helps turn an article that is good into an article that is great. We cannot wait to see some of the drafts you guys at home are putting together and I'm sure the final versions written up on your magazine templates will be completely different to what you started with. Please share your final pieces with us using the PL Communities hashtag and tag Match of the Day magazine, National Literacy Trust and Premier League Primary Scars via your school or class's social channels. Now, the last thing to do before we produce our final draft is a special top tip. But first, Matt's going to do a couple more shout outs. OK, a big, huge shout out for Dunton Bassett, Howard Primary School. We've got St Martin's Year 3 and Year 4, Park Walk School. Year 5, Chesterton. Year 6, IMZ School. St Gerard's in Birmingham. Holy Rory. All kinds of things. They're all coming in. It's great. Hello and happy holidays to you all. Lovely stuff. So many cool scores getting involved. Thank you all again for being here. The next before we move on is that top tip. As I mentioned, my top tip would be have some patience. Learning how to do a rainbow flick on FC24 isn't the easiest move in the world. You have to have the right player and the right circumstances. So if you don't get it right your first couple of times, don't worry. It will come good and you will feel great. Matt, what would your top tip be? So mine would be don't take your eye off the ball, especially when you're learning and you're practicing um, that roulette, that Marad Maradona Zidane turn. When you're first mastering it, really important to keep your eye on that ball. But obviously, when you become a master like Zidane or Maradona, then, you know, you can do what you like. But just to start with, keep your eye on the ball. Brilliant advice again, Matt. Uh, we've got some further ideas that have come in for the equipment you might need for your activities. Woolen hook. Not sure what that one is. Maybe uh, maybe Matt knows. Um, football knitting. boots. I think that's knitting. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. Knitting is great. So many cool people doing knitting these days. Uh, we've got a hoop and space for basketball. Brilliant. Can't throw it into nothing. You have to have somewhere to throw it in. Thank you, Holy Rosary sending that one in about basketball. Um, yeah, if you could share your top tips in the chat as well, we'll try and get to a few of those. Share that advice and make we all learn and create even better pieces. But we've got one more surprise. You might have your whole article in hand, but we thought we might do another book giveaway. Whoever gets picked by the ball here wins a box of books for that school. So... Beth, if you want to get that wheel back up, thank you, Beth, behind the scenes, sorting things out. And it is time to spin that wheel. Ooh. 
We have a winner, Carmel College. Congratulations. Awesome, Carmel College. Please email sport at literacytrust.org.uk to claim your big, amazing, awesome, great box of books. So there we are. That is the workshop. We would love to see your final written pieces when they are on the magazine template, which is part of our magazine team intervention. Very cool. Please share it with us on your school's social media with the hashtag PL Communities and tag National Literacy Trust, Premier League Primary Stars and MOTD Mag. And you might have the chance to even feature in a future issue of BBC Match the Day magazine. So that would be pretty cool. And I'm saying that as someone who works for them, I have to say. That would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And so we've got some time left for some questions. Um, so shall we kick off um, Jake I'll, I'll ask you this and then you can ask me back uh, so this is who do you think will win the league this season and it's from year six Sullivan school wow year six Sullivan school what a tough question to start with I'm I imagining know. that league means the Premier League because um, if it was the WSL really easy answer Chelsea if it was the Scottish Premier League Really easy answer, Celtic. But Premier League is a bit tougher. And they might not be doing very well. But I think Man City have still got it in the bag. They're about to win the Club World Cup out in, um, I think, <laughs> I don't even know where it is. I think it's Qatar. But, um, yeah, they're one game away from winning that. Beat the Asian champions yesterday. So, I think with that in the bag, their first trophy of the season, that momentum comes back and, and City do it. How about you, Matt? Who do you think? Well, really, I think City too, but I guess I should give a different answer because um, that's the fun of football, isn't it? We need to be uh, supporting different teams. So I will go for Aston Villa. Let's throw them in there. I reckon, you know, the, that home form is pretty amazing. And, um, you know, stranger things have happened. Leicester City. Let's see it. Exactly. And the championship, Matt, how do you think your Southampton boys are going to do? Uh, well, I think, sadly, I reckon Leicester have, uh, are walking away with the league. So that's fine. Um, at the moment, Ipswich are holding on to that second place. So I think the best, we're, we're looking at a playoff run. Um, and yeah, it's going to come, I think, it, you know, us against Leeds, maybe. Um, but fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we'll get there. Although, to be honest, I'm going to be honest, I love the championship. What a league. So it much is, fun. It is so brilliant. Much fun. It's hard to be in, but it's nice to watch as a neutral. Yeah. As a Wolves fan, oh. I'm happy to be out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Matt, I've got one here for you. Um, it's a bit of a two-parter. So what made you want to become a football book writer and how many football books have you written? Oof, good question. Um, so um, I think reading really was the thing that inspired me in the first place. Um, reading great books when I was young and just thinking to myself, wow, how cool would it be if one day I could be the person, you know, writing these stories and, you know, producing books that people could see in libraries and, you know, enjoy. So that's probably the main inspiration for me was was the reading in the first place. Um, in terms of number of books, I'm going to be honest, I've slightly lost count. Um, the Ultimate Football Heroes series, this uh, this one, um, it is, it's pretty, um, I think we're about 70 books within that series. Um, and it's just growing and growing and growing. And then I've written some other books as well, like like Play Like Your Football Heroes and all kinds of other ones. So, um, yeah, a number somewhere between 50 and 100. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, lovely. OK, uh, let's make it time for me to ask you a question, Jake. This is fun. Um, who will you be interviewing next? Oh, tough one. Um, we've just done lots of good interviews in the magazine. We just spoke to Erling Haaland, we spoke to Jude Bellingham recently, Sam Kerr. We had, they're all in the current magazine on shelves now. Um, next, we've been having a lot of chance with Mary Earps, his agent, the England line S goalkeeper who just won Sports Personality of the Year, very well deserved last night. And we'll be speaking to her in the new year. So I think Merpsy's next. What a cool job you have, Jake. What a cool job. It is cool. It's a lot of hard work. You have to do a lot of writing, lots of lots of emails too, but it is pretty cool when you get moments like that. Yeah. Right, Matt, want to know next, if you've written 50 to 100 books, you don't look 100 years old, I have to say. 
So well, I want... thank you. <laughs> so I want to know <laughs> how long it takes you to write a book. Um, good question. Um, so I think um when I first started writing books, which um although I don't look a hundred, was actually you know ten years ago. So um it's it's been a little while. Um, when I first started, obviously, whenever you first do something, uh, it takes a little bit longer. You kind of have to get used to what you're doing. So um, those first few books that I wrote, um, like the Gareth Bale book, I'm thinking, and a few others, um, those did take me a bit longer. So they were probably more like six months um, to do all of the research, get all that information that we were talking about earlier, and then to obviously write and rewrite and do all the drafting and stuff. Um, whereas now, because I've been doing it for quite a while and and the series, there's a kind of style to the series that I know quite well, probably more like two months or something like that to, to do the whole thing. So awesome. Yeah. Wicked. And Matt, there's another one come straight in for you. This one is from Mr. Chalinor at Howard Primary School. And he wants to ask, what tips would you give his class when they have a block in their writing? Oh, great question, Mr. Chalinor. Um, I think two things. One one of them is slightly difficult when you're in a class at school, and that is to maybe sometimes sometimes taking a break from from what you're doing can actually help. You know, to get a bit of a you know some time outside, running, playing football, whatever, just clears your mind and all of that stuff. That I know that can be a, a little bit hard in a school classroom, but hey, taking a little break can help. And um, the other thing is that I think it's it's really really important to kind of take the pressure off and to just think think of it as if you can get to the end of that story, no matter how happy you are with, with what you've got so far, that in itself is a really great achievement, something you can be really, really proud of. And then, just as we were talking about earlier with that drafting and redrafting, you can go back and make it as good as it can possibly be. So I think it, it's so much of it. It's just about getting something down and getting to the end and feeling proud that you've got that far. And then you can go and make it a whole load better. Totally. That's a great advice. It is all about you write your article and then you sort it out later. You almost have to do the second bit as much time as the first bit, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I've got a question for you now, Jake. This is a good one. Um, who is the most famous footballer you've met? Oh, that is very tough. Um, I've done lots of good interviews. Um, one night I interviewed Rio Ferdinand, Thierry Henry, Harry Kane, Peter Crouch, Mo Farah. I interviewed them all in the same night. So that was pretty cool. But my favourite, Matt, was um, one day I spent hanging out in Manchester uh, on a football pitch with Kevin De Bruyne, the Man City star. So that was really cool, having a chat with him just before City won another Premier League title. <laughs> and did you get to play with him? Did you? Did you? No, did you not. Know, risk... Did not risk injuring Kevin De Bruyne. <laughs> you know, imagine putting a, a sliding challenge in and Kevin De Bruyne's injured and Man City don't win the league. I could not handle that sort of criticism. Um, <laughs> so that's very good. Matt, another question for you. Year six at Sullivan want to know what your next book's going to be. Right. Good question. So um, I've got a few. So um, in we've just um, released a new um, update of the Messi book in the Ultimate Football Hero series, which goes all the way up to uh, includes the World Cup win and the Ballon d'Or. So just getting that story up to date. Um, the next um, we finally, you know, uh, there's 70 books in the series, but the one player that we hadn't actually done yet was the king of football himself, Pele. So we finally um, got a classic football heroes book coming out on Pele and um, that will be in January and then after that the next kind of current hero is um, Man City and Argentina star here's a putting pressure on you Jake come on come on come on Julian Man Alvarez City. very good yes Julian Alvarez will be the next <laughs> put you up, put you on the spot there didn't I yeah really did I was like Nicholas Otamendi but no that was, that was a long time before he's at Benfica these days <laughs> lovely stuff um one more question for you um which is a really nice one um how did you get into journalism jake in the first place oh that's a tricky one i learned that i loved uh journalism at school so i wrote a match report on man united v man city man united won that game six nil uh carlos tevez scored a hat trick and i got i got really good marks on that and then just uh kept writing i worked with my local team afc telford um, back in the day, that was my first piece of 
writing I wrote for the match program. So if you've got any interest in football journalism or any kind of journalism, your local team or your local newspaper is a great place to start. Um, but that is all we have for questions. Uh, Absolutely. Sadly, we're out of time. But a quick shout out for Oscar, who plays for the Southampton Academy. Now we're talking. Um, I need a surname. I need to I, I need, you know, full name for, you know, that star of the future. But um, come on, you saints. Good stuff, Oscar. Keep going. Keep going. You're at the right club. You're at the right club. Wicked. The next James Ward Prowse, I'm sure there, Matt. Um. Thank you, everyone, for joining us again as well. Hope you did some brilliant writing and hope me and Matt helped you learn a few things about wording. So uh, before you leave, though, just quite importantly, stay right you are because there's an important film about to be played. It's going to show some of the work that the National Literacy Trust and Premier League Primary Stars are doing. And there's a little surprise feature in it from Wales and Tottenham star Ben Davies. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Have a great holiday period. Oh, I love Ben Davies. I can't wait to see this. Okay, let's press play on the video and have an amazing new year, everyone. Hi, I'm Ben Davies. I play for Spurs. I'm here today to surprise the kids on their good work they've been doing on their literacy course. My favourite bit has probably been when Ben Davies walked in. I was about to cry because I was his biggest fan. When he walked in, I was shocked. It was amazing. It was really nice to see the kids from the local primary school. The club does some great work in the community. The foundation is, uh, has a big impact on the education of local youngsters, and we've got this amazing stadium where we get to host them and we got to meet them. So. It was great to have uh, the kids down today. Who loves football? <laughs> so we've all been practicing, Ben. We've written some questions down as if we were going to meet a footballer. I've done a course over the last six weeks to do with literacy mainly, and today was a journalistic aspect of it, so they got to ask me some questions. And, um, yeah, there were a few tough ones in there as well. What's your hobby? Ooh, that's a good question. Obviously, I think my biggest hobby is playing football. That's my first one, but I like to read a lot. Personally, I really enjoy reading. It's something that I'm passionate about, and I think the more I read, the more I learn. Sometimes getting the chance to sit down, read a book, let your imagination run, I think it's, uh, I think it's really important. It's not often that you get to interview a Premier League footballer, but it was great to see them thinking about their questions and then putting them into practice. So I think it's going to be really useful for them getting engaged with reading and writing in the future as well. Why did you want to be a footballer? It was my dream since I was a kid to play football. I worked pretty hard. And thankfully, I got to be a professional and get to do it every day, so I'm very grateful. The Premier League magazine team is encouraging the same things that we do with the magazine. They encourage kids to read and write and, and learn those skills through the medium of magazines. So I think it's a really important initiative. Oh, it's been amazing. I mean, we've had a lot of pupils that before the programme, some of them weren't enjoying literacy as much as we wanted them to um, and just having a coach come in and deliver these sessions you know to get them inspired I think it's made them really enjoy literacy. Can you scoff a hot dog down in 30 seconds? Could I scoff a hot dog down in 30 seconds? Yeah I think I could. If I was hungry I think I could do it in 30 seconds. <laughs> the idea is that we take 10 pupils or so um, and work with them in an intervention group setting and then try and progress from there. I think the Literacy Trust have done a very good job along with Premier League at creating the resources for the Premier League Primary Stars programme. I think it's a great initiative that everyone should be using. Yeah!